Learn how to make this beautiful floral chandelier on. Hey, Ma! My daughter didn't like her light fixture. She thought it was dated and it had these weird spots on the glass part. I think they painted the ceiling and just let it drip on there. Another problem that she had was that it hung too low in the middle of her dining room. One thing that she sent me pictures of was floral chandeliers. She wanted to switch it out, but I didn't really have electrical experience, but I did have experience with fairy lights, battery operated fairy lights. I found these beautiful lights at Ollie's. They have pearls in them and I thought they would be perfect for this project. I started picking up different branches and materials. These came from the at-home store and those hooks, I'll show them to you more later. Uh, these leaves were interesting. They came from Michael's and the rest I think I picked up from Dollar Tree. The goal was to make a floral chandelier that was less wedding-like and more outdoorsy because she has a wooded lot and she wanted to al also bring the outside in. So that's what we were going for. Think Midsummer Night's Dream. This would be all held together with wire and zip ties. So I also use wire cutters and needle nose pliers. I was able to find this gold wreath frame at Dollar Tree and I thought that was a better fit for her dining room than another color. But if you want it to, you can paint it any color basically that you want. So I started cutting the branches down and then weaving them in and out on the frame. I wasn't too concerned at this time with, with making sure that they were going to stay because like I said, I had plans of using wire and zip ties to keep them in place, but I also had a plan of using those fairy lights to wrap around it to keep them in place as well. My thought process was to try and mimic nature. I started with the large branches and I placed them first, trying to fill out as much as possible. I did have a couple that I kept on the side just in case I needed to fill them out later, but I was just trying to fill out, make sure the branches were all the way around. So if you look up at the chandelier, you would see like almost like a, a grapevine wreath type of form. What I didn't want is for you to be able to see that metal frame or see the wires from the fairy lights. So moving along, this vine really fills it out really nicely, and I started to see what it might be ultimately. Another note I wanted to make is that if you see the side that I'm working on for the wreath, it's looking up at the wreath. So the curved side is facing up because that's the side that's going to face down. And I wanted to make sure, again, when you look up, it was beautiful. So I worked on that side. It was kind of funny when I started collecting all of these pieces for the project. I noticed that there are so many different shades of green. There's so many different shades of white. Um, you know, a yellow off-white would not have gone with this wreath. Also, most of the greens are, are like this piece, sort of a sage color and also the different sizes of leaves. There's just a lot that you can play around with to get the feel that you're going for. And again, this is my daughter's take on it and she wanted it to be almost like ethereal, but also forest-like, if that's a thing. But I, I got what she was going for and um, she was very happy when it was done. If you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It helps us more than you can ever know. And if you know someone who would be interested in this craft, please feel free to share it with them. I found this foliage at Michael's and I loved it because I wanted something that was sort of like a eucalyptus feel, but not eucalyptus. And I don't know, maybe this is a eucalyptus, I don't know. But it was like the perfect size, it was a perfect color and I was very, grateful it, it it really it really fills out the the wreath i'm just gonna call it a wreath because that's what i make wreaths <laughs> that's how i sold my daughter on it i said it's like a wreath hanging upside down basically she always sends me things like mom can you do this and i have to like then sell her that i can do it <laughs> okay so here are the lights i'm putting three AAA batteries in them 
and they have uh, I believe two settings on there. My idea was, you know, the concave area of the wreath form would be facing up and this would be nestled right in there. I was gonna zip tie it to the frame so that, you know, she could slip it out if she needs to change the batteries. Um, but, you know, it was pretty secure in, the, in its place, but she can just reach up with her hand and click it on it on and off however she wants and then I was going to cover it uh, for what it's worth with flowers and things like that so you could not see the box I was very glad that it was a clear box and not like a, a black box or something that would would have stuck out a lot even those green boxes that are very green um, so here's what I was talking about I'm just taking the fairy lights and wrapping them around to keep all of the different branches in line and secure. I kind of did a rough wrap around and then I went back and where I could I, I filled it in more so it'd be more even. Uh, you know if you did the if you've done the Christmas tree you know the routine so I've that's basically what I'm doing here and because the wire the copper wire was so thin I didn't have to worry about that showing through and if it did show people would see the pretty pearls on it and think it's part of the decoration so I was very happy to find those lights um, at Ollie's now moving on these are the hooks that I was talking about I got these at the home store at home store at the at home store and they have a pretty crystal on them I only needed three for this wreath, so I will probably be using them this Christmas uh, if I remember where I put them. But uh, they're very pretty. They have a little crystal, and I wanted that because initially I thought that these would be showing. Um, I changed my mind later, but and I actually cover them all up. But if anyone sees through them, they're pretty. So these I just hooked onto the wreath form in uh, three different locations because there's three hanging pendants. Just try to make it as even as possible because I am going to have to make this parallel, you know, with the floor. This is what the light looks like when you unscrew it. And I thought that the, the light bulbs were like candle lights. My idea was to unscrew them, take off the coverings. They had no place in my daughter's decor and then use the zip ties to fold them up so that they would look like candles you can see here you know i i hung it from the loops on the bottom of the wire but it was very sloppy looking i i liked it but it was kind of sloppy but i liked the direction i was heading in and i thought it would definitely work i just needed to tweak it a little bit and this is it <laughs> This is the light fixture. It's kind of very romantic, Midsummer Night's Dream kind of thing. I took the old things and I kind of zip tied them up. And I just, I need more foliage to cover that. But that's basically it. So I went back to the store and I got more foliage and flowers and I just started decorating all going up the light fixture. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to Hey Blah if you're enjoying this. And I just kept on adding and if I didn't like it, I added more. And then ultimately this is what we had. It's a nice full wreath. It's It goes up the three pendant lights, covers up the, the wires and zip ties and things mess underneath and I think it ultimately turned out really nice she has two different options she can use the regular lights and then those will glow at the top or she can use the bottom fairy lights which is a more ambient glow on the bottom and like I said ultimately she was very happy it definitely matched her country farmhouse decor thanks again for spending some time thanks for staying till the end and uh, we do appreciate you. Uh, until next time. Bye.